Now, a third problem related to uh, position velocity, uh, and actually this one's starting with acceleration. Given a function for the acceleration of a moving vehicle here, uh, you're starting at 5 miles per hour, and then this function is acceleration in miles per hour per second, which is going to be important uh, in a minute here. If we want to know how fast the car was going after 8 seconds, we can do this a couple different ways. We can use a definite integral expression here. How fast was the car going? So we want velocity at 8. Well, we can use velocity at 0 plus net change in velocity. The net change in velocity is going to be the integral from 0 to 8 of the rate of change of velocity, which is acceleration. Right, because integral rate is net change. So we have 5 plus this integral here. Uh, we could do it analytically or on the calculator. This one is really not that hard to do analytically, so we'll do this one analytically. For that, we need an antiderivative of 2.4t, or 1.2t squared, evaluated 8 and 0. Uh, if I finish working that out, I have 5 plus 1.28 squared, which we can uh, work out pretty quick here. 1.2 times 64, 76.8, so we're going to have 81.8. 81.8, this is miles per hour. All right, that's one way to do it here. So this was using a definite integral expression, right? Saying starting plus net change gives us the quantity we're looking for. We could also do this using an indefinite integral by just thinking about the fact that you have acceleration as 2.4 t and knowing that the velocity since since acceleration is the derivative of velocity velocity has to be the integral of acceleration so I'm going to write this indefinite integral expression here now since it's an indefinite integral we're going to get uh, a constant involved there so this is 2.4t, so then the expression we get is 1.2t squared plus some constant. But then we can use our condition that we're given here. We know that we know that velocity at 0 is 5. We can just put those numbers in. Well, 5 is equal to, when we put a 0 in here, 1.2 times 0 squared plus that constant. If you work that out you get that the constant is 5, right? We should know that, that that's going to be our constant, just to confirm there. Then you can write our function here, velocity at time t is 1.2 t squared plus 5. Then we have an actual function algebraically for it. We could have written a function algebraically over here if we had left out those 8s and instead put a velocity put a time t in there. We could have all worked it all out here. We would have got, instead of the 8, we would have got a t here, right? And in that case, we would have had to use a different variable here, right? x or something like that. And we would have got the exact same thing here, right? If we wanted a function, 5 plus that. Right now, we can have a look at our second part of this problem here, which is how far did the car travel during those eight seconds. How far did it travel? Let's well, figure out how far it traveled. We want the we want the displacement, right? The displacement is going to be equal to the net change in uh, position, which is the integral from zero to eight of that velocity, right? Our velocity function. So we actually do want a we do want this function uh, to be able to do this part of this thing integral from 0 to 8 of 1.2 t squared plus 5 dt. If we finish evaluating that, well this one we could do analytically here again or on the calculator. Uh, 
t cubed and then divide this by 3.4 plus 5t. Evaluate that for 8 and 0. Go to the calculator again here. Check what it is. It's 0 0.4 times 8 power of 3 plus, I guess I could do this myself, 5 times 8. We'll get that number there, 244.8. Now, you have to think of what the units are in that. Let me put this over here, 244.8. What we had here was this velocity function was in miles per hour. But then we didn't integrate it across hours. We integrated it across seconds. So the units on this are miles per hour times seconds. Or in other words, miles per hour times seconds there. So to clear this up, we're going to multiply it by 1 hour is the same as 3600 seconds. We're going to basically divide it by 3600 seconds and it'll give you the right number of um, the right number of miles, right? It didn't travel 244 miles in 8 seconds. <laughs> it traveled uh, it traveled these other bizarre units that we don't know what they are. Uh, miles per hour seconds. <laughs> uh, so we're going to do that number divided by 3600 and it'll give us our our right number. 0 0.068 miles. So less than one mile, but that makes more sense. So that's an example of using two different methods for that problem where you started with acceleration and uh, had to work backwards to uh, velocity and ultimately something to do with position here. Hopefully it made some sense.